Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Laughix. Got another video for you guys today. What else do we have? Oh, I wonder what it could be. It's another M1 uh, A2337. This is a MacBook Air. It's in here because it does have no power, and we need to see really what's going on with it. So, whenever we see no power, right, what we want to do is we want to take a look at our USB C tester that we have here. And man, it's great uh, for you guys to see and for us to see as well. It's a great troubleshooting tool that we have, and it's going to be measuring what the laptop is is or I'm sorry MacBook what the MacBook is taking right because we're not just a laptop we're a MacBook so we're gonna plug it in and see what we get we get a 5 volts and about 0.01 amps okay we've seen this a lot before now we want to check to see if, uh, if the circuits good so we can plug it in the other one too. see if we get the matching symptoms here okay so we do get matching symptoms now it's not necessarily a good thing it's not necessarily a bad thing but it's getting uh, consistent symptoms which is 5, volt, 5 volts and 0.01 amps. If we were getting uh, something maybe with um, uh, there's there that whole circuit is maybe changing. Maybe we're getting 20 volts in one and maybe 5 volts in another. Most likely then you do have a problem with one of the ports. Or maybe it could be a little bit shifted there. But usually if there's a difference between there, there's a CD32 issue. Made lots of videos on those. Talk about so many times all the time because it's USB-C. It's power and data and power and data is what? So Shouldn't be on the same port, but it is, especially these MacBooks and all the newer MacBooks and a lot of laptops are going, and I know uh, it's becoming more of a centralized thing. But if it was really such a great thing, then why don't you really see gaming laptops have that? You usually don't see high-end gaming ones that have USB-C uh, charging because they're gaming ones, and don't even want to be using uh, more wattage in those things right through those ports. So um, let's go ahead and take a look because it's a real famous one, and let's go ahead and see what's going on with it. Okay. So let's check the symptoms again. So we have this here, and this clear damage that's going on over there. This, the rest of it actually looks to be pretty clean. So let's see if I plug this in here. I'm going to do this. I want to do a little trick here. We do a little party trick here, right? So we see that we're getting 5 volts and we're not getting any type of ampage here, right? So uh, we see that there's clearly something over here that's causing that problem. Now, this is where the Touch ID plugs in, which is there. This is that connection over here. Oh, you guys can't even see. So we see that uh, we plug in, right, we're getting our, our 5 volts. Thing. Let me zoom out a little bit for you guys. There we go. So as we see here, it's not getting a voltage, but we see that there is clear damage over here on this little I.O. board. And this has a touch ID, which is the connection here. And then this is the connection to the main board under here that goes underneath. And then there's also the speaker connection there. And then there you got your auxiliary port there. And this isn't totally necessary for this to turn on. No, but you would like to use the power button, wouldn't you? It would be pretty nice. But watch this. So check, take a look at the voltage when I do this. I'm just going to disconnect this from the board, and let's see if it's going to change anything. All right. So if I lift it up, watch. Now you can see the voltage is actually going, and the current's going, and it's going to reset itself. Now we're getting our 19, and I'm sure this is actually going to go ahead and power on. And there you go. Imagine that. So and that's because there is obviously short there. So there is a problem here itself. And what we would need to do is we could do a few things. We can try to see if we can do a little repair for this one over here. Or what we can do also is just to replace the one because these are a separate board and it depends on the, the corrosion. But the corrosion is really damaged and there's like a BGA chip, which there usually is on one of these over there. So you just better just do replacement and there's no um, risk for any, you know, especially if there's a little bit of liquid damage just if it gets underneath there. Um, there's no other risk and you just are able to do a full repair for it. So I think that might be the best way really to go. So let's go ahead and see if I have one, because I think I might have one here, or we can at least take a look at uh, the damage under the microscope if you guys are interested as well, as well right? Because that would be pretty fun to do. So let's do that. I'm just going to go ahead and take up the board, because what we also want to do too is we want to make sure that there's nothing else on the board that's going to cause that, because if there's liquid here, there could be liquid somewhere else, right? So we always want to do a scan of the board first, and then if the board looks pretty good, which it most likely is, and you see that it's powering on. Um, then we'll just mainly focus on the I.O., separate one there. But let's pop everything out anyway because we always want to do visual inspection, go to microscope and take a look because there could be a little piece of corrosion hidden. And then maybe, who knows, maybe a week from now, a few days from now, or a month from now, then the main board has a problem too. And we, because we didn't fix it, and it could get worse. So it's always just do a scan because that's the better thing to do. Make sure there's no other damage. Okay, so I have everything up. And here's the connection. It goes from this board here, and it goes right under the little uh, heat sink, and it connects on this side. That's where the power button does connect, or you want to call it Touch ID, and it looks to be good here. 
So we see nothing's really here. This has been covered up very well. There's a nice tape that goes over it. It's actually nice because liquid does actually go there quite a bit. You'd be surprised. We actually had some videos, uh, or we made some stuff even we made some videos that actually did have corrosion there, and we had a burn mark on the other side there, and it didn't pack that. Uh, it's nice that this actually does have a l nice little covering over it too. That does help it a lot, so it helps protect. So sometimes when you do see tape or any other things going, it's, it's usually just for the tape to hold down there, to, and it does also uh, help cover it up um, to make sure the connection doesn't get burnt. Because if you have a burnt connection here, it's definitely gonna make it a lot more harder to do <laughs> any other type of repairs for it because it's, it's everything's soldered, right? So that's the problem. So this looks to be pretty clean. And another way we can really tell is if this area is clean too, then there's usually nothing really else going on there. Um, but here we do see that there is uh, the obvious damage here. We go under microscope in just a little bit, but it looks pretty obvious there. Uh, I did see that there was like a little bit of, uh, one of the screws actually close to where the USB-C port was, did have a little bit of like, a, you could say corrosion, um, did have a little bit of a, like a, there was a little liquid stain on it. But I take a look here. And it looks like our USB-C ports actually look to be pretty good too. So that's good. And these are modular because it's very easy, especially if there's an open gap or an open hole for liquid just to seep in there and touch something. And then when you touch your charger with that liquid and the liquid touches um, the lines here, the day lines and power lines, they could, they could uh, make in contact with each other. And then you got a big problem, right? And then you could short circuit everything or give a problem, especially here those ICs are. So let's go into the microscope because I don't want to miss anything and then we'll just take a look at this real quick and see what's going on. So you guys can see? Alright, perfect. So let's do a quick scan and let's see what we can see. Well, this area all looks to be good. I didn't notice anything. I didn't notice anything too obvious so it looks to be very clean. Um, these are the areas that you worry about too. Let's see, nothing else. Nope. Nope. All right, and there's the back side of our CPU, and then here is our little cable. And we can lift this up. Let's see, ow. Oh, man, I put tweezers the wrong way. Back. So let's look under here. This is sometimes this area can corrode, but usually you'd see like a stain over right this part. It looks to be good. We're clean. And this end, which would make more sense because there's maybe a liquid there from before and you can see maybe a little bit here um, see that there might have been a small impact there's a little bit of like a dot there see that that makes a little bit more sense and on the other side right you can look but most likely if you didn't see it on the one side then probably didn't see it anyway but it's always good to take a look because you have no idea right what you're really looking at until you have a microscope and it's always what you want to do because we don't want to have a bigger problem we could have solved earlier here and let's see so now we have this, and we can see there's this there's a BGA chip here. So what we could do is uh, it's not ridiculous under there, but it's causing a short right. If it's causing a problem, it's causing a whole entire short there. Um, we can just do a replacement for that. Uh, this chip doesn't really exist unless you get another one. But then if you get another one, right, <laughs> you have a thing. So. All right, for this, what we can do is we can try two things. Um, now this is close to where our, our speaker connector is. This is plastic there. And you can see it even rusted a little bit at the top. You guys can't see anything. Okay, so here's our I.O. board. And we can see why we may have a problem, right? So we can see this area is, uh, is heavily impacted. That's the green there. And that's corrosion. And you can see even on top of, of these where you see... Um, up here that the, even these components have r rusted a little bit. That's why they're getting a little bit orange. It's because there's a little bit of rust there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of rust there. And um, we have a BGA chip that's been impacted pretty much all the way around. That's probably what's really causing the short there. Um, and obviously this other part as well. So usually these ones are just do replacement. We can do that. And that will really take care of it. And it's, it's pretty inexpensive anyway. And we don't want to be... Uh, messing with a BGA problem that could be causing another short somewhere else, right? So, um, now this is a BGA chip, might as well just, this is a BGA chip, so it's better just to do uh, a replacement for these because I don't even know if they make this one chip anyway, but the whole IO isn't really even that uh, ex expensive anyway. So, let me see, because I should have one here. Let me compare it and see what we got. Okay, so here's our good one. This is what it should look like, right? We got a BGA 
All the caps look good. And yeah, it's a good one. It's a healthy one. Okay, so we put in the new one here. Let's go ahead and see. Well, I mean, we guess we could check, right? We don't even have to open it. We can check uh, to see if it's getting the correct voltage. We'll plug in the battery too. Why not? Down all the way? Okay, it looks good. So let's go ahead and plug this in and let's take a look at our voltage here. Should be getting normal voltage, right? Because it's almost short. Yep, and it immediately it rises. And what we can do is we can also check um, the button there. We'll just shut it down and then we'll restart it. Oh, wait, this is the other <laughs> one. I'm still used to holding down the option key. Um, but look, you see it's getting our voltage there. I'm going to turn this off real quick. Now I'll turn on with. I'm just going to turn this off real quick and let's turn on actually the power button, make sure the power button is good here. So, and there you go. So, everything looks good, turns on, works, and that's your fix. So, anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on fixing the A2337 MacBook Air that's not powering on, it's not charging. We can see that this is our little culprit there, and we did we were able to do a replacement for that one, and actually does totally work. So uh, again, stuff can be causing a short, especially when it, there is another circuit board involved, uh, like a like a I/O board, something like this. So you have your power button, you have a separate board that does other things in general. Uh, sometimes they even put the sound chip on there as well, so that can be giving a problem. Um, but any type of short can affect the main board, especially if there's a connection to it, right? So it makes a lot of sense, even though it's a separate. IO board. So hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please do like it really does help us a lot. We have a lot more in-depth liquid spill repairs um, in general, especially for stuff that's more for motherboard uh, fixes and for uh, CD3217 issues, which is usually like the USB-C circuit. Sometimes that does fail. We show a lot of doing replacements on those, reballing those as well. Also have T2 uh, fixes that we show on this channel as well. So if you're interested in any of that, definitely go ahead and check that out. And out, even outside of that, we do have data recoveries that we do here from hard drives as well as other MacBooks for data recoveries as well. So if you're interested, definitely go ahead and check those out and see you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.